Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll try to compare the animals on the basis of few more systems. We have talked of digestive, respiratory and circulatory system. Let us say on the basis of excretory system, how can we classify or how can we group various animals? On the basis of the nitrogenous waste which they eliminate, the animals can be classified as a monotelic, where ammonia is the chief nitrogenous waste, with waste which they eliminate, ureotelic, they eliminate urea and uricotelic, the animals which excrete uric acid. And we also know the examples which can be placed in this. Uh, in ammonotelic, there are almost all or maximum aquatic organisms because ammonia is a toxic substance and it has to be removed as soon as it is formed. And for elimination of ammonia, water is also required in plenty. So lower organisms including bony fishes, bony fishes and the lower organisms, they would come under ammonotelic. Ureotelic humans, cartilaginous fishes, these are ureotelic. Insects, birds, they come under uricotelic. Insects and birds, they are uricotelic. So here we have classified the animals on the basis of the nitrogenous waste which they eliminate. Now, on the basis of the structure which they have, again there can be various kinds of animals. So let us see what structures they have for excreting or eliminating this nitrogenous waste. It could be just the body surface. This is seen again in very simpler animals like hydra that is nidarians where the body surface acts as the membrane through which the waste can be eliminated. Then there can be some specialized cells like flame cells which are known as solenocytes. This is seen in case of platyhelminth. Then, in case of roundworms, there is H system or it is also known as rennet system. This is seen in case of Askehelminths, that is the roundworms. Then, in case of annelida like earthworms, there are nephridia, this is in earthworms. In case of cockroaches or insects, there are malpighian tubules. This is in insects like cockroaches. Or there can be structures which are very very evolved structures that is the kidneys. There are many more structures and kidneys are seen in case of these vertebrates. There are green glands which are also known as antenary glands found in prawns. So there are many many structures which help in elimination of this nitrogenous waste. So we can categorize or classify animals on the basis of the nitrogenous waste and they also have various types of structures which they use to uh, get rid of this nitrogenous waste. Now let us talk about circulatory system, sorry, let us talk about the nervous system. Nervous system is for coordination. Again, we will start with the simpler types of organisms. They have diffused type of nervous system. Diffuse type means there are some scattered cells 
which are going to help in conduction of the impulse or stimulus but they are diffused not in the form of a system and this is seen in case of cylindrates the example is hydra then there can be ladder like ladder like nervous system that means there are some strands which are interconnected so it gives an appearance of ladder and this is again seen in a worms that is platy helminths and ascii helminths here we find ladder like system in case of mollusks we find that there are ganglion and few neurons so ganglia and few neurons or nerves now let us come to a little more evolved type in case of echinoderms there are two nerve rings two nerve rings are present and these nerve rings are present on the upper and lower surface it is known as aboral and oral surface so there are two nerve rings which are present and this is in the form of a circular structure they have water vascular system and they have this nervous system which is in the form of two nerve uh, two nerve rings and then there is cns that is why the organism here the vertebrates higher animals they have cns cns means there is brain there can be spinal cord and the pns that is the nerve part so it has cns and pns peripheral and central nervous system so nervous system on the basis of this also we can have animals which have various types of nervous systems the third system that we can talk of is skeletal system skeleton is uh, the structure which provides framework to the body if this structure which provides framework is inside the body then we call it endoskeleton and if it is outside the body then it is known as exoskeleton in endoskeleton we would include bones so this bony endoskeleton is found in most of the vertebrates and bony fishes especially because when we talk of fishes it, they have endoskeleton but in case of bony fishes the skeleton endoskeleton is of bones but in case of cartilaginous fishes <coughs> the endoskeleton can be of cartilage also and cartilage is also endoskeleton in the embryonic condition so this is found in most of the vertebrates cartilage as endoskeleton is found in cartilaginous fishes there is one more type of endoskeleton which is known as spicule <coughs> sorry the spicules which are found in sponges in sponges and these spicules can be made up of two things they can be made up of calcium salts or they can be made up of silica so if they are of calcium we call them calcareous spicules and if they are made up of silica we call them siliceous spicules and these structures are present inside the body in case of sponges it is present between the outer and the inner layers now an exoskeleton exoskeleton means there is some hard structure which is present outside the body and in this we would include nails horns hooves feathers these are all exoskeletal structure and scales also so when there is something which is providing framework and protection from outside we would call it exoskeleton and if the things are or those structures are inside the body then we call it endoskeleton so different types of animals they have different types of endo and exoskeletal structures so here we have compared all these or classified these animals on the basis of three systems now in the next part we'll try to understand how we can classify these animals on the basis of reproduction